In today's video, we are searching deep into the jungles of Borneo, on the other side of the planet, looking for some of the most prehistoric creatures that still are alive today. I'm talking about creepy crawly animals that could have lived right next to the dinosaurs. And if we're lucky enough, we might even come across the grail animal, the animal that I want to find the most, the trilobite beetle. All right, you guys ready? Cool? Let's get into it. Come on. I'm gonna be looking for stumps, old rotten logs, flat rocks, things that we can flip that might conceal some of the creatures that we're trying to find. Let's make our way down here to this creek. Nothing. Let's go over here. Oh. Really thought that when that started to move, that was gonna be a home run. All right, so we're making our way deeper into the rainforest here at Kinabalu. Ooh, big earthworm. Whoa! That's, oh, that's a monster. Yeah. Hefty. It is not squishy at all. It is really like super tough. Here, Andrew, feel that. Whoa! Oh, it's getting slimy. Whoa! Is that crazy? Super slimy. Yeah. Oh, oh no! <laughs> this worm just took up. Oh, look at this grub. Ugh. Even better. Check out that bad boy. Oh yeah. Oh! Oh, oh gosh. Thanks, buddy. All right, I think we're done with this grub. This was one gross log. Yeah. Let's keep going. I know the trilobite beetle is out here. We've just got to find it. If you're ever out flipping in any environment, whether it's rocks, logs, leaves, whatever it might be, always be considerate and try to replace the environment just how you found it. Bunch of stuff there, major roots. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Guys, look at the size of that millipede. Hang on, let me see if I can get it. Now some of these can emit a really nasty odor, so I don't wanna spook it. Let me see if I can get it crawling on my hand. Look at the length of that millipede. Probably approaching five inches in length. And millipedes, of course, get their name because of all those legs. Millipede means a thousand feet. Borneo is actually home to the longest millipede in the world. Now, I don't need to worry about this millipede biting me. The only thing you really need to worry about when it comes to millipedes are their toxicity. Some of them are poisonous but they do feel really strange. Feeling all those little legs grip onto my fingers and crawl across. Andrew, stick your hand out real quick. I wanna show you what this is like. Let's put it on your finger. Don't worry, it won't bite. There you go. What's that like? Whoa, that's crazy feeling. They have amazing grip. And they use that grip to climb up and over logs and terrain out here in the rainforest. Well, that's a good start to our adventures here in Borneo. Let's go find something truly unique. Come on. All right. So far, so weird. We are finding all kinds of cool stuff. This environment is perfect for a trilobite beetle. They love tropical forests just like this, with tall tree canopies that allow very little light to reach the ground. Ow! Oh, nothing. No trilobite beetles yet. I really thought we'd see one by now. Covering a ton of ground. Probably hiked at least four miles already. Oh man, look at this snag. Oh, here we go. Another kind of millipede. This one's even cooler than the last one. What you're looking at is an armored millipede. They're called armored millipedes because you can see the segments of its body have these pronounced ridges, making it look like body armor. This is something that you could imagine seeing in the time of the dinosaurs. It looks like a living fossil. And here's something really cool about these armored millipedes. Let me show you, if, if there's ever a situation where this millipede feels threatened, look at what it'll do. It rolls itself into a tight little ball. And you can see how all those armored plates that are really rigid can protect 
the soft underbelly. Starting to must smell smell that. Actually doesn't smell that bad. Whoa, it smells sweet. Right? Like cherries. I'm not kidding, guys. This millipede smells like those red cherries that come in the syrup. What are they? Maraschino? Maraschino cherries. Maraschino cherries. That's exactly what it smells like. I can't believe that. I expected it to smell like musty and foul, but it actually smells kind of good. If anybody knows, tell us in the comments why this millipede is putting off an odor that makes it smell like cherries. So weird, but so cool at the same time. All right, guys, well, I would say this adventure is heating up. Every creature we're finding is getting more and more bizarre. Let's put this armored millipede back and keep heading down trail. Sometimes when you're flipping, you forget to just look. So I try to always make a rule of like three flips, observe. Oh, wow. Got a bit of a break in the canopy here. A lot of light. Oh, look at that hole. But something lives in there. Whoa, look at this log snag. Guys, I got something right there. Here, can you uh, throw this in my backpack real quick? I'm gonna need both hands. Put your cameras right there. We got a trilobite beetle. Hang on. Nobody move. Got it. Got it. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh, we got one. Huh. Yes, dude, oh. trilobite beetle, baby. Woo! Oh man, I am pumped. If you guys are wondering, and if you can't tell, this never gets old. Finding a new creature for the first time, this is why I do what I do. This is what I love about making videos on Brave Wilderness, discovering creatures like the trilobite beetle. Wow, I feel like a little kid again, guys. Okay, first of all, it is a beetle. I know it looks a lot like the millipedes, that we found earlier on this adventure, but it is not a millipede. And it gets its name because it looks like a trilobite, which of course trilobites have been extinct for hundreds of millions of years. And we only know them by their fossil remains at this point. Now I've actually dug up trilobite fossils in Utah before that were over 500 million years old. And I have to say, those fossils really do look like the trilobite beetle that you see here today, especially those upper body segments. This is nearly a living version of an animal that looks like something super prehistoric. Right away, first glance, you're thinking millipede. Then you see how it slinks its body along and you're like, man, is that some kind of worm? Is that some kind of larva? It kind of looks like a Helgramite, like we've seen along the streams in North America, but it's definitely not. And then you go to the tip of the head there and you see that tiny little head with its beady little eyes and its two little antennas sticking out. Look at its abdomen, guys. It almost moves around like a little inchworm. It has like a little foot at the back of its tail and just beep, inches along. As it's crawling around, of course, I feel the little tiny legs making contact with my skin, but I'm also getting this like wet sensation. And I've noticed, if I flip it upside down, that little foot. <laughs> yeah, that little pad right there, it's wet. I can feel it slinking across. And I don't know if it's like laying down a track of pheromone or what, but it's cold and it's moist and it's weird. <laughs> it's very weird. And they're very rigid. It's got a cool feel. Andrew, you gotta, you gotta try it. Whoa. See what you think. Whoa, it's like she has a suit of armor on. Totally, and it is armored. That is a defense mechanism because look at how slow she moves. This is not a fast creature. So it's gonna rely upon that armor 
to ward off predators. Also, the aposomatic coloration. I'm gonna guess that this insect has a pretty foul taste. And what's even weirder than its appearance is how different it is from its male counterpart. Let's take a look at the male version of this trilobite beetle right here. What? Are you kidding me? And here's the thing, guys. Scientists were puzzled by this for over 200 years. When this creature was first discovered, they could not figure out what the male of the trilobite beetle looked like. In fact, it wasn't until the 1980s that a scientist actually followed around one trilobite beetle for days, days and days and days, and it saw them mate. That was the only way scientists were able to find out the male version of this species because the female is just so unique. And not anything against the male version of this insect. Cool looking beetle, right? But nothing is gonna top the cool factor of this female trilobite beetle. And this is probably gonna go down as one of the strangest creatures I will ever get to present to you on Brave Wilderness, the trilobite beetle. Yes, I hope you guys enjoyed this one as much as I did. I'm Mark Vins, be brave, stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. All right, let's go. Whoop. Let's go put this beetle right back where we found it. If you enjoyed that episode, make sure to search for the Brave Wilderness channel on YouTube so you can join me and the crew on our upcoming adventures.